Today we will once again touch on the topic of psychology from the point of view of the film industry, namely how to convey to the viewer all the experiences of the main character. It is no secret that most plots, whether in games, books or movies, are built according to a simple scheme of emotional and psychological experience. When a traumatic situation occurs and the main character tries to untangle this tangle, this burden on the soul, in order to find the strength to move on. One of the vivid examples of such an experience can be called the well-known cartoon, The Lion King, which was released back in 1994. Although you may know it in the format of a 2019 remake using photorealistic computer graphics. According to the plot, they are almost the same, so we will not stop there. Before I start, I will say something like, beware, spoilers. Therefore, if someone has not seen this work of film art, I recommend watching it. In the plot of this cartoon, we see a bloody confrontation between two brothers in the struggle for power, when Scar betrayed Mufasa. At first, he wanted to get rid of his son Simba, who was supposed to become the full heir and ruler of the lands of Africa, but after failure, he came up with a new plan. As a result of which he throws Mufasa off a cliff and he dies in front of the little lion cub. Adding fuel to the fire is the fact that Scar has convinced the kid that he is the one to blame and he needs to run. In this scene, we see an extremely traumatic experience that Simba is going through. And this includes the five stages of coping, which include denial or isolation, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Simba's psyche cannot perceive reality as it really is, and a protective mechanism is activated. He is displaced. He forgets about Mufasa's fall and switches his attention to the authority of his uncle, which caused further events. Simba runs away, but feels completely devastated inside. In the cartoon, it is very coolly shown in the form of a desert, in which there is no reference point, there is only insane heat and complete loss of strength. It is then that he is found by two friends, Timon and Pumbaa, who help Simba recover and he begins to live with them in an oasis, as a result of which he loses his identity as the King of Beasts. As a lion, replacing it with the motto, Hakuna, Matata, which literally translates as carefree life. This is how the protective mechanism of our psyche works. But then a chance meeting with Nala, for those who don't know, Simba's childhood friend, brings the main character back to reality. At first he refuses to return to the past, but doubts about how right he is living and whether he is on the right path, still force him to face the truth, especially when he sees his reflection in the water, there will not be a little lion, but a full-grown lion, which Mufasa was. It's like a midlife crisis that occurs in the 30s, when people think about the correctness of their actions and the overall strategy of their lives. And the understanding comes to Simba that he is not from here, not from the oasis, but from completely different lands, where he is the heir of the royal family and his purpose is to become a ruler. As his father once was. Moreover, he is responsible not only for himself, but also for other animals that live there. Reality forces the protagonist to face the events from which he has been running away for so long. To see his homelands in decline from Scar's rule. And also to remember that it was Scar who threw Mufasa off the cliff. But in the new confrontation, everything is different, because Simba clearly understands who he is and why he came back. The events that happened to him, all these stages of psychological experience and acquired experience, helped him become who he really is. In addition, in the finale of this story, Timon and Pumbaa stay with Simba, as if bringing the principle of Hakuna Matata into the future life, helping to cope with all the troubles and obstacles on the way.